everybody, Andrea here. So let's talk about different types of teeth whitening and what might be better for your client when you're asking them questions about what type of teeth whitening are you looking for today? What have you had before? They might be wondering about all of the different packages that you offer and they might not know what is better for them. So it's good for you to know what you can recommend. So as an example, if a patient comes to you and they say, oh my goodness, Andrea, my teeth are so sensitive, but I want whiter teeth. What might be the better option for them? Do you think take home lightning? Do you think a simple 30 minute procedure, a 60 minute procedure with you with a higher strength peroxide or no whitening at all? What if a patient comes to you and says, I've had whitening before, but I wasn't happy with the whitening that I received? How are you going to respond to that? Are you going to say, okay, well, I guess you're not going to be happy with the teeth whitening. Oh, well. Or are you going to offer them the take home whitening box? Are you going to whiten for only half an hour? Or are you going to whiten for two hours to make them happy? So these are the types of things that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to give you kind of a... Uh, a condensed version, but there's going to be more inside the course as of this Friday. So definitely check out that video. So number one is what if a patient says to you, I'm really sensitive. Can I have teeth whitening done? You would say yes, absolutely. You're going to suggest a sensitive type of toothpaste such as Sensodyne. That is what I personally tell my patients to use every day, twice a day tell them not to wet their toothbrush, not to rinse with water for at least two weeks before they get the whitening done. If they're super excited and they want, and, and they want the whitening done right away, that's okay too, but then just have them use the Sensodyne for two days, even, sorry, for two times a day, even three times a day if they're getting whitening with you, say at the end of the week, and then have them continue with the Sensodyne even after the whitening is completed for a couple weeks, if not more, and let them know the whitening product that you use has a built-in desensitizer. What is a desensitizer? That is what coats the teeth to prevent sensitivities. And there's no added um, preservatives. There's no added anything in there other than just to make the whitening work. There are many different products out there, many different teeth whitening products that have added stuff to make them last longer, to make it just last longer, smell better, taste better, whatever, but who needs that anyway? But those added preservatives and all of that make the teeth sensitive. So if you're if you're using the product that I give you, you can let them know that too. And reassure them. Say you can absolutely have your teeth whitened. I'm not sure if you've had the whitening done in the past or what happened, but you can stop at any time. Even if we whiten for 20 minutes and then you decide you've had enough, that's okay. But we are going to make sure and do whatever we can, giving you a toothpaste before, after, using desensitizers, making you as comfortable as possible. Doesn't that sound better than just simply say, oh, your teeth are sensitive. Oh, well, too bad. You can't have whitening done. You have a sad patient. You're sad because you're not making money. So these are the types of responses that you need to be thinking about. What about if a patient says to you, you know, I've been unsuccessful in the past with teeth whitening. I didn't like it. So you need to know what they didn't like and ask them questions. Say, do you know what product they had used? How long did you whiten for? Did you get any before and after instructions? Were you able to reach out to that teeth whitening technician if you had questions? Because you need to ask them questions because, because without asking those questions, you don't know kind of what went wrong. Maybe they weren't happy because the patient decided to stop the whitening halfway through because they had to go to work. Well, if you stop the whitening procedure halfway through, it's not going to work as well as if you did the whole thing. But that client might not have realized that and then is upset why their teeth didn't go 10 shades lighter. Which brings me to my next point. What if the client was expecting to be the lightest shade on the shade guide, but they smoke 10 cigarettes a day for the past 15 years, and they were actually the, the darkest shade on the shade guide. So, and then they're unhappy because they only went five shades lighter, which is amazing, but maybe they wanted to go 20 shades lighter. So depending how you respond is going to be dependent on what the client says to you. As an example, if you find out that the client just didn't get as light as they wanted to, you can let them know and say, well, with me, we will monitor how light you want to go. I don't want to go too light because believe it or not, with your skin tone, it's going to look too obvious and you wouldn't
wouldn't be happy with me. So what I like to do with my clients is after one hour, I actually show you the shade you are on the shade guide. If you want to pay for another 30 minutes, we can absolutely do that. Or I might want to suggest a take home kit. So I've done the hard work. I've gotten the teeth white, but say you want to go two or more shades lighter. You can actually do that at home over the course of a couple weeks. So you're not just nipping their concerns in the bud saying like, well, sorry, I can't help you. It is what it is. You're listening to them and offering them solutions. So doesn't that sound better, right? People are going to come back to you if you are seen as the expert. So there's many other different client scenarios that you need to be aware of. And I talk about them more inside the course. That is an updated video that will be coming out on Friday. But think about things like if a patient says to you, I've been super sensitive in the past. My mouth was so sore, I couldn't eat or drink for a week. What do you do differently? What type of questions are you going to ask? It was probably the teeth whitening product that somebody had used and didn't give them proper instruction. What if a client says to you, my whitening didn't last very long. I wasn't happy with it. I paid all this money and it only lasted for three days. Find out why. Did they eat blueberry pie every day for two weeks? Is that why it didn't last? Did they not brush? every day for two weeks, or maybe the whitening wasn't done properly. So you need to ask these questions. You might have a client say, well, I'm used to getting my teeth whitened for two hours. Why do you only do the one hour? Or they might say to you, I only have time for half an hour. Like, what can you do for me in that amount of time? Or you might have a client say, I'd rather do the whitening myself. How does that take home tray work? Am I going to get as light as if I did it with you? Do I have to do it longer? So all of these common client questions we're going to answer and it's a big deal. You need to know how to respond and how to ask more questions to get the proper information. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Summer is upon us a great time to start teeth whitening. Start your own teeth whitening business. Now is the time. Imagine working two hours every day, that's it, but making $400. That sounds pretty awesome, right? What if you want to work three hours a day? You can make so much more money than working for somebody else full time and you really can't enjoy your summer. I want you guys all to enjoy your summer. So thank you for watching. Let me know if any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.